Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Greetings from Transformation Church. I'm Bishop Gary McIntosh, and this is my lovely wife, Pastor Debbie McIntosh. Thank you so much for joining with us for this special Christmas presentation, Home for the Holidays. Now grab some hot chocolate and get ready as we enter into praise and worship.
we ask you, God, to awaken our souls, Lord. Set a fire within our hearts, God. We want more of you, Lord. Awaken us, oh God. Awaken us, oh God. Christmas TC family, welcome to our special Home for the Holidays presentation. 
Michael and I are so excited and honored that you would allow us into your homes for Christmas this year. If you're new to TC, we want to encourage you to stay connected to everything that's happening with us by following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. You can also stay up to date by visiting our website, transformchurch.us, where you can watch past sermons like Grace Like a Flood, Damaged Goods, and You Are Loved. For those of you who would like to partner with us financially, we've made it easy for you to give right from home online or through text. Simply visit our website and click the Give tab or text one of the keywords followed by an amount to the number on the screen. Be sure to make it out next Sunday for our New Year's at Noon service and then join us the following week as we begin our new sermon series, Beyond. Well, Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday, Feliz Navidad, and every other greeting that you can think of. I'm so excited that you're joining us for our wonderful, special weekend experience called Home for the Holidays. And many of you are gathered with family and friends, or some of you are watching on a cell phone, or you're, you're watching with a group of your coworkers, and we're so excited that you're here joining us um, for this amazing experience. Today is a great day. It's the day that we get to celebrate Christ and his birth and him coming to give us life. And um, I just thought it would be amazing that we did something a little different to represent the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm gonna just share a few thoughts with you this morning from, from something that I've been thinking about. It's something that I know that we all have a touch with, but we really need to re-examine right now. You know, this is the season where there are gifts gonna be given all around the world to all kinds of people at different types of gifts. But the gifts that we're going to give, honestly, are going to be temporary. The Jordans are going to be great until the new ones come out. The car is going to be good for the next two or three years. Um, the toys you get your children, they're not going to like them tomorrow. Um, and, and it's all good that we give these gifts. But what if we could give some gifts that kept on giving? And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk to you about three gifts that you can give today. And not even just at Christmas, but all year round, that'll keep giving to people and produce a life change in the world that's around you. So the first gift I want to talk to you about is the gift of encouragement. Men, all of us need encouragement. It takes courage to be a mom. It takes courage to be a parent. It takes courage to work that job you work. It takes courage to raise your children. It takes courage to do anything worthwhile in this life. But in our society, we don't get a lot of opportunities for people to put courage in or encouragement. As a matter of fact, a lot of people discourage you. They take courage away. And what I'm asking you is be a person that can give a gift that keeps giving of encouragement. There are people you're sitting around right now that going through all kinds of things and they may not express it or may not say it to you, but you can just feel it and they need to be encouraged. They may have lost hope. They may have not been able to do the things they wanted to do for their kids or their children this year. They may be on the brink of losing their job or not being able to fulfill their dreams or go back to school or whatever it is. Encourage them. The word tells us in Proverbs that life and death are in the power of our tongue. And you have the power to be able to speak life and encourage somebody in ways that nobody can. You can do that. Give that gift this Christmas. I'm sitting here right now remembering mentors and friends and people that didn't even know me, that th those moments where they encouraged me and spoke something into my life that allowed me to see something that I didn't even see in myself. They would say things like, man, you're going to be great. There's things you can do, man, that you're, you're going to be phenomenal. And I didn't even see it in myself, but they encouraged me. And I'm standing here today on the encouragement of other people. Today, be a conduit of encouragement. Look what the word says in Ephesians 4.29. It says, don't use foul or abusive language. It says, let everything you say. Now, for some of us, that's going to be hard because we rag on people all the time. We find people's flaws. We, we do different things like that. But what if we could be ones who let everything we say, or at least try to let everything that we say, be good and helpful so that the words will be an encouragement to those who hear them? That's a gift that you can give today to your children, to your haters, to people who talk about you. You can encourage them. And so I want to try that right now. I want you to take a moment 
And think about something you can say to somebody. Some of you are, are sitting in a room with people right now or with one other person. I, I want you to think of something that you can encourage each other with right now. Tell them that their hair looks good, that they weave is nice, that, that you like the way that they, they do their job. Or figure out something that you can say that will put courage in. And if you don't have anybody sitting with you right now, I want you to, to, to get out your phone and text somebody right now. Text them something encouraging. And I promise you, this gift will keep on giving. You got 60 seconds. I'll see you in a minute. Didn't that feel good to be able to encourage somebody, put courage in, tell them something they're good at or great at or something you like about them? This is something you can do not just today, but you can do it every day of your life. Do it for your boss that you don't like. Oh, I, I know you didn't like that one. But do it for your boss that you don't like and encourage them. The next gift that you can give that'll keep on giving is the gift of prayer. And prayer is simply talking to God. I heard somebody say it like this. It's transferring the burden of this life to God, inviting him into your situation. And some of you are saying, I don't, I, okay, I can't get with that, that, that prayer thing. I can get with encouragement, but prayer, it, so many people think you need candles and music and all this other stuff. No, it's just communication with God, talking to him just like you would talk to somebody else. And the great thing about it is he actually can do something about your situation. But the reason that this is an amazing gift that you can give is because prayer is something that you can do on behalf of somebody else. It's called intercession. You can, you can pray for it, somebody else when they're not even with you. They're not, you don't even have to know their whole situation, but you can give the gift of prayer to them. There's so many people right now who are in situations that are bad in our world, in our society, in our families. And many times we just talk about it or shake our head or turn the other cheek. But what if you gave the gift of prayer? The word tells us that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous, they work, they avail much. And what I'm trying to tell you is if you would make a decision to begin to talk to God and intercede for somebody else, that's a gift that'll keep on giving. Uh, my mom, she, she's one that prays a lot. And I can remember there were times where I was living completely backwards, contrary to everything I've been taught, contrary to everything that I knew. And many times she wouldn't say anything for me, but I knew she was praying. And I knew that her prayers were working because I'd try to do something and stuff would fall apart. I'd be like, everybody else can do this. And why can't I do it? It was because she was standing in the gap for me. She was interceding for me. She was praying harm off of me. She was praying that the favor of God would follow me. What I'm saying to you is wherever you are and whoever you are, you can pray for somebody and give that gift to them. Look what the word says in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Paul writes over 42 times about the importance of prayer. And this is one of them right here he says I urge you first of all he said pray for all men pray for all people and ask God to help them who do you know that needs God's help and you can be the one that gives the gift of prayer to that person it says intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them and then it tells us who to pray for. It says, pray for the kings, the people who are in authority over you so that you can live peaceful and quiet lives. What I'm telling you is you can pray for your haters. You can pray for the people who like you. You can pray for the people who you work with. You can pray for your business partners. But as you pray, you're giving a gift that is going to keep on giving. There is no distance in prayer. And there are people that need God to intervene on their behalf. And so let's give the gift of prayer today. This is what I want us to do. I want you to get one person in your mind that you know needs God's help. Come on, just think about them right now. 
It may be a brother, it may be a sister, it may be a boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, wife, husband, acquaintance, long lost friend. Get them in your mind. And I want us to pray for them right now. I'm gonna lead you in this prayer and I want you to get them in your mind and I want you to agree with my prayer. And this is gonna be the start of you making a decision to give the gift of prayer, not just today, but every day of your life. Let's, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for this person that you've laid on our heart, that you have an amazing plan for their life. We just thank you right now, whatever they're going through, Father, that you give them the proper perspective of it, that they see that you're not trying to harm them, Father, that you're not trying to keep them from something, but you're trying to keep them for something. God, I just thank you, Lord, that you'll protect them and your hand of favor will be on their lives and that you're literally allowing them to come into another level of wisdom about their situation and their business and their family. Thank you for restoring marriages, God, and I thank you for, for just letting people mend in their hearts. Heal their hearts, heal their emotions, heal their finances, God. We're just, we're just giving this gift right now of inviting you into our friend or our family member's life. And we just ask you to heal, deliver, touch, change, transform them right now. And we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for it. In Jesus' name, we agree. Amen. That's how easy it is. Just giving the gift of prayer is inviting God on somebody else's behalf. And you can give that gift all the time. I want to tell you about this third gift. This third gift is giving the gift of a second chance. When you give somebody a second chance or how other people say it, forgiveness, when you forgive somebody, that's a gift that keeps on giving. And now this may be one of the hardest ones because you don't know what they did to me, Pastor Mike. You don't, you don't know how this situation hurt me. You don't know why I feel the way I feel. I did not want that to happen. I was young. It, it, it hurt my business. It hurt my family. But if you give the gift of forgiveness, it really frees you. It allows you to be one to walk in wholeness. And you may be in a room with some people you need to forgive right now. You may be getting with them later. You may be married to somebody you need to forgive. You may have, have a friend that you need to forgive. And I'm telling you, give that gift to them. Give them a second chance because it, because it will keep on giving. You know, I heard somebody say it like this, uh, unforgiveness, or holding that grudge towards somebody else. It's like drinking poison and expecting somebody else to die. It kills you. And this year, as we go into 2017, I want you to walk free of everything that has been holding you back. And I know some of you are saying, I don't, I don't really need to give this gift. Like I've already forgiven everybody. Me and my girls is fine. We, we good. That's my best friend. That's my best. Okay, cool. So what I'm saying to you is, who is that person that if they walked in the room right now, that it would change your entire attitude? That if they called you at this current moment, it would take your holiday cheer down to something completely docile and frustrated. That's the person you need to forgive. That's the person you need to extend a second chance to because they need it. And the word tells us very clearly in Matthew 6, it says, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive, and I want everybody to see that we would have to refuse to, not that we can't, but we would refuse to forgive. If we refuse to forgive others, the Father will not forgive your sins. Now, I don't know about you, but I need all of the forgiveness that God can give to me. I need his grace, and so do you. And so what I want you to do this holiday season is give a gift that keeps on giving. Give the gift of forgiveness. Who is it? Who is it that you need to say, I'm letting you go? You don't have to repay me. You don't even have to prove it. They may be dead. They, they, they may not even be anywhere where you can talk to them, but in your heart, you can let them go. They may be in the room with you right now. You need to forgive them. and You need to give them the gift of a second chance. And I know that's hard. For many of us in this holiday season, it's hard to give encouragement. It's hard to pray for somebody. It's hard to give the gift of a second chance or forgiveness. But I want to offer you a gift that makes it easy to do all of that. It's the greatest gift that keeps on giving. It doesn't just give um, for a season, it gives eternally, and that's the gift of salvation. Salvation is what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. You know, in this Christmas season, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, but the birth was all for the death. He lived and for 33 years a blameless life so that he could die on the cross to give us a gift. And it's that gift of grace, the gift of salvation, 
that allows us to live free from the bondages of sin and the world's corruption and all this other stuff that we, we have to deal with alone without him, but with him. The word tells us that he's already overcame the world. I want to let you know that salvation is the gift that changed my life forever. I was a young man who was addicted to pornography, very manipulative, prideful, and all kinds of stuff I could give you a list of. But when I really made a decision to allow the Lord of the universe to come live in my heart and guide me and lead me and direct me, it changed my entire life. And I want to offer you that gift today. That gift that'll keep giving to your family for generations to come. And I want some of you who are saying, I've tried this before. I've heard all about it. It's about rules and religion and all this other stuff. Look what the word says in Ephesians 2 and 8. It says, God saved you by his grace. When you believed, and this is my favorite part, and you can't take credit for it because it is a free gift of God. There's nothing you have to do except believe to accept this amazing gift that we'll keep giving. And it makes encouraging people easier. It makes praying for people a, a, a regular occurrence. It makes forgiving people our daily practice. And before you give these gifts that keep on giving, you may need to receive the gift that keeps on giving in salvation. It's very simple. According to Romans 10, 9, if you believe and confess, that's it. You have to to, to, to believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he raised him from the dead, you're saved. And people make it so hard and so many rituals and different things, but this is really not even between me, you, and God. It's between you and God. He says, if you just believe in your heart that I am Lord, I'll come in and I'll just change everything in your life. And he's a gentleman, so you have to invite him in. He's not gonna knock down your life and try to take over. He's watching over you, but he wants to be in every detail of your life. And this is how you invite him in. If you're listening to this, you feel like God's a million miles away, but you really want him to walk close with you and really understand what Christmas really is all about. People always say, Jesus is the reason for the season. And I understand what people are saying there, but I really believe that a relationship with Jesus is the reason for the season. And I want to offer you this gift that really God offers all of us that keeps on giving, which is salvation. If you want to pray this prayer, I want you to just close your eyes and bow your head, everybody right now that's watching. And I want you to just say something like this. I just want you to say, God, I need you. I need you to come into my life and change me, to renew me, to make me whole, and to transform me. If you could say this out loud, just say, I make you my Lord and Savior. I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, man, I am so excited for you because I know what it was to live a life without God walking with me, and I know what it is to live a life with God walking with me every day, and now you have that. And we're not just rejoicing. There are hundreds of people, if not thousands, rejoicing with you, and all of the angels, the Bible said, are rejoicing over one soul that gets saved. So if this all was just for you, we're so excited about it, man. This is a brand new day, and you have now received the gift that keeps on giving. Man, we wanna help you. We want to walk with you. We want to stay in connection with you. So we want you to do just three simple things. First thing is we want you to tell somebody. Tell somebody you just got saved. Tell somebody you gave your life to Christ, that he is the Lord of your life. This helps you stay accountable and lets you start building your confidence in your new walk with Christ. What we want you to do is tell us. Text NEW LIFE to 51555. And we'll give you some next steps and we'll celebrate and rejoice with you. The second thing we want you to do is we want you to find a local church. Find somewhere that can help you on your Christian walk. You see, this whole life is not about perfection as some people try to make it. It's about progression. And people progress differently, but we want you to progress forward. And you need a community, a group of people to do that around. So find a local church. At the bottom of the screen, there are churches that are scrolling right now here in Tulsa that are life-giving churches. If you're not from Tulsa, find a life-giving church and get plugged into it. Let somebody know your name and help them help you you by getting in accountability and community. The third thing we want you to do is we want you to start a devotion life. 
And it's very simple here around Transformation Church. It's just reading the word, praying, which is inviting God into every situation. And we want you to worship, which is expressing your love to God. And it usually helps when you have music to do that. I did a series a while back called Charged Up. And you can go to our website and see how to really start a practical everyday devotion life and get in connection with God. And I wanted to give a special shout out to everybody in our military and armed forces who couldn't make it home for Christmas. Thank you for what you do. We're praying for you. We love you. And we can't wait to see you back home safe. Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, and every other greeting. We're believing that this is gonna be the best year of your life. Eat some ham, turkey, and sweet potato pie from me, and enjoy your family. Give encouragement, pray for somebody, give a second chance, and receive the gift of salvation. We love you, and we cannot wait to see you in the new year. Merry Christmas. Thanks for joining us this Christmas for Home for the Holidays. We hope this message brought some Christmas joy and hope to you and your family this season. If you would like to share a testimony about what God has done in this holiday season, we would love to hear from you. Send us an email to amen at transformchurch.us. We want to celebrate what God is doing in your life. And on behalf of the entire Transformation Church family, we want to wish you a very, very Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and, and a Happy, Happy New Year. Year.